everyone, I'm Ronnie. I'm Berlin. Welcome, Welcome to CCBC. If you're joining us for the first time, we're so glad to have you. And we certainly hope this won't be the last time. Today, we will sing praises to God, hear another story, and learn about the life engaged with God through a well-known Bible character, Joseph. So let us now prepare our hearts to worship God and get ready to engage. engage. Good morning. Let us begin our worship in reading Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. May we bow our heads and pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, mercy, and love you are bestowing upon us. Thank you for being faithful and just in forgiving our sins as we confess it to you. Father, we humbly lift up our utmost adoration through our songs of praises. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, let's worship together. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. to God is a statement that we believe in Him, and we are not our own, but of God's. Trusting that in His presence, 
we are safe and wanting nothing, giving us the reason to worship Him more. As we sing this song, may this be our personal commitment to our Lord.
Cecil Mendoza, wife of Jay Mendoza, and a mother of two boys, Isaiah and Elijah. I'm a civil engineer with my own construction and trading business. During the lockdown, all our construction-related projects stopped, and as a result, we don't have revenues because we don't have sales and collection. Our company savings started to deplete as we supported our workers financially and gave them ayuda. We were in a panic mode and we tried to venture into other source of income, which of course is not easy to do during these times. It was also during this time that our life group agreed to study on the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and know more about our Lord Jesus Christ on a deeper level through His teachings. Although part of me was really anxious and worried, my journey with my life group helped me cope up with this uh, crisis. As we share our personal experiences and encounters with God on our quiet time, I realized that my despair led me to, be, to desperately pray ask, seek, and knock to God for help and miracle to end this crisis. In fact, I was encouraged by Luke 11, 9, which says, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. And keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. Uncertain times like this due to COVID-19, has brought me hope as I witness prayers being answered. Although some of us lost their jobs, some of us even lost their loved ones, which caused us so much pain and tears, it also provided us opportunities to be united in prayer, to trust God more even if we don't understand. We were not okay yet, but with God in our lives, it's okay not to be okay, for this too shall pass. And let no one of us stumble as we hold on to our solid rock, Jesus Christ. Thank you for that inspiring story, Cecil. You know, in this time of economic crisis, we are rest assured that we have a good God who will take care of us. One of the most famous names for God in the Bible is Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. In many Bible stories, God has provided spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical needs for His people. In Matthew 6, God also assured provision for our daily needs, such as food and clothes. He tells us not to worry about anything and come to Him by faith instead. So let us bring to our Jehovah Jireh today our personal needs, national and global economic concerns. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to enter into your throne of grace, where we can find rest. Abba Father, our great Jehovah Jireh, we praise you because even before we ask in your name, you already know and provide what is best for us. You are our source of joy and peace. Our flesh and heart may fail, but you are our strength and our portion forever. Your words are true, and we believe that in all things, you work for the good of those who love you and are called to your purpose. We ask that you would continue to protect and sustain your church, meet the needs of each ccbc -er and our families. Bless us, Lord, and help us bless others as we stay connected and deeply engaged in the work for your kingdom. May your presence abound in each CCBC household and overflow our cup, not only of the things we can hold in our hands, but with the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Holy Spirit, our helper, comforter, and guide, lead us to have a compassionate heart towards the people around us. Use your church, O God, to bring your goodness wherever we are. Please direct our steps towards recovery. 
help each worker from the private and public sector to do our job well and excel for your glory. Our generous God, please give wisdom to each leader on how to run their businesses and to be a good steward of your resources. May all your children be a source of light to the workplace, to organizations, communities, to our country, and to the whole world. Teach our heart to continue to trust in you, that you would take care of the jobless, struggling businesses, small and big entrepreneurs. Sustain us, Lord, and bring order to our government. Bless our decision makers, law enforcers, health workers, frontliners, educators, and the Filipinos to be united. Help our economy to be on track. We believe that even in the midst of economic crisis, we will continue to taste and see your goodness because you are our merciful and loving God. We hold on to your promise, Lord, especially in this time of trials, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. May all glory be yours, our God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Your generosity has helped this church proclaim the goodness of God in many ways. So thank you so much for faithfully and cheerfully giving back His tithes and your offerings. To give today, please visit ccbc.ph slash giving. Let us now prepare our hearts as we engage with God's Word through His Messenger, Pastor Philip Taroja. Good morning. Good morning sa inyong lahat, kapwa CCBCers, and all those who are watching with us today, fourth Sunday of August. Thank you for joining us today. You know, you like my plants? Oh, plantito na ba ako? Hindi po. Si Mrs. po ang plantita, pero walang sale. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay. Yes, I really appreciate Rika for helping set up, and these plants are really from our yard. Praise the Lord. Okay. Engage, yun po ang theme natin, and the first two months is engaging with God, the life engaged with God. We're looking at nine Bible characters. We are learning from these nine uh, Bible characters uh, how they connected to God, and more importantly, how God connected to them. And this uh, guide us how we can connect to God today. Okay, let's look at what we have gone so far. Past weeks, Abraham, the faith connection. Isaac, the heart connection. Jacob, the enduring connection. So let me just say this. Once your faith is solid, okay, your heart is aligned, and then your grip on God is enduring, okay, what's next? Today, we're going to look at that. Because what's next is this. It will be tested. It will be tested. So today, our theme natin is Joseph. The Tested Connection. One of my favorite Bible characters, sa totoo lang, you know? Joseph, the saga of night and day. The life story of one who come from the you know, lowest pit to the highest level any person can go through on earth. Really, sa totoo lang. Jo Joseph is a story of many of us, sa totoo lang. It's a story of hope. Hope for those who are enslaved, or who have been betrayed, those who feel like they're stuck the rock bottom of life, yeah? Those who feel imprisoned in the dungeons of uncertainty, in the darkness of the future, they have hope because in the story of Joseph, God is the one who rescued him. God was with him. That's very clear in the text. And the Lord was with Joseph. That's repeated many times. So, while the story of Joseph is, in all its beauty and exciting, thrilling adventures, uh, really captures our emotions and imaginations, these human points of view that we see of his life can teach us a lot. But today, we would like to be taught from the point of view of God. It will be God's point of view 
that we would like to look at. We would like to see the life of Joseph at is, as it is played out in the, you know, in the eyes of heaven. And from there, we can learn what it is in Joseph that made him such a blessed vessel of the Lord and, and made him connect to God as well as God connect to him in a way that changed the destiny of his family and eventually his nation, Israel, and even Egypt. Wow. Let's consider this man and let's consider God in Joseph. Okay, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to learn the word through the life of this Bible character, Joseph. And I pray, oh God, once again, as we look into this life and relearn and learn, that you will be the one to teach us your fresh insights and the truth, that the way it applies to, to all of us today. Father, send the word, as you said in the word, that you will not send it without the word accomplishing its purpose. Whatever the purpose of your word for today, oh Lord, I ask you, send the word to me and to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. The tested connection. God tested Joseph. And he tested him in, in three areas. You know? And these three areas can be captured by three words. One word. Okay? First, God tested him in the area of dependence. Second, God tested Joseph in the area of devotion. And then third, God tested Joseph in the area of his desperation. So in these tests, did Joseph pass? Oh yes, he did. Because in all of these episodes, Scripture tells us what Joseph did. And then Scripture declare, and the Lord was with Joseph. Okay, ready? Again, we, we use the learning contraption. Ah, in you last week, S I L. What is the story? What is the insight? And what are the lessons? Story number one, the pit episode, shift of life dependence. As usual, let me first set up the scenario. Uh, Jacob's 11th son was Joseph. But Joseph, he was the firstborn K. Rachel. That's why he became his favorite and gave him a colored robe. We know the story. And so I'll just, you know, brush through this story that is so familiar for us where we could set it up. Because of his uh, colored robe, his brothers envied him. And at the same time, Joseph was very arrogant. Totoo lang. He boasted about his being favorite and even boasted about who he was in his dreams to his brothers. You know? So one day, with, with that scenario, Jacob sent Joseph to check up on your brothers. Sabi niya. Asan sila? So in the story, we, he, he soon found them far in the desert and you know the story you know what happened the ten brothers conspired to eliminate joseph and so they threw him into an empty pit and left him for dead you know he got his colored they got his colored robe and blemished it with animal blood and then that's what they showed to jacob Oh, poor Jacob, he, he, was, he was shocked, you know. Jacob's heart was so broken. Now, meanwhile, at the bottom of the pit lies Joseph, stripped of everything. Everything, his rope, which was the symbol of his supremeness, his security, of his status, of his future. All that was gone. Along with it was his plans. They were obliterated. At the bottom of the pit, his life was demoted to the lowest ebb. 
from the you know from the favorite son to the forgotten slave. So we read in Genesis 37, uh, 23 onwards. Let me read these sections for you. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brothers and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to where? Egypt. All right. Joseph was sold as a slave. He was literally, literally at the bottom of the pit and figuratively at the bottom of life. So at the pit, where can he go? You cannot go forward. You cannot go backward. You cannot go sideways, sideways. There's no way he can go except one way. What? Upward. Joseph learned to look up. And that means Joseph learned to depend on God. So in this story, I'll put up our insight, our first insight. The tested connection is marked by total dependence on God. Let me repeat that. The tested connection is marked by total dependence on God. Listen, I have learned as a student of the Bible that the fundamental essence of sin is man's independence from God. You know, sin says to man, you don't need God. You don't want God. You can exist without God and live on your own. Your life, it's yours to live and choose whatever, however you want to live it. God is not a part of the equation of life. That's what sin says to our hearts. That's what sin does to us. So even though Joseph grew up knowing the God of his father Jacob, he has not come yet to a full realization and faith in God. Kasi nga, in our term, laki sa layaw, di ba? <laughs> laki sa layaw, jeprox, jeprox. Alala niyo yan, no? Everything was given to him as a favorite child on a silver platter, everything. No? Now, so now God says, I'm going to use this man, but not in this situation. So God allowed the sinister plan of his brothers to create a major setback, there's the word, which actually was a divine setup of God. And so at the bottom of the pit, we see Joseph had to let go of all he depended on. And of all he took a grip on for life. Instead, as he let them go, he, he took a grip of God's hands. You know, there's no mention in the text that Joseph prayed, but I'm sure he did. That he confessed his arrogance. I'm sure he, he did that too. You know, that he felt the the deep pain of betrayal and loss of all he, he had and all that he had owned. What the text show, however, is that the Joseph that came out of the, of the well no, is a different Joseph. It's a changed and transformed Joseph. One who depended on God totally. If you continue the story up to the very end of Joseph's life in Genesis 50, you would see a changed man described with the phrase, the Lord was with Joseph. So let me summarize the insight into one statement. Okay, I'll put this up on the screen. This, is, this, is, this may be your take for today. 
God dependence start where self dependence ends. Did you see that? God dependence start where self dependence ends. So God was connected to Joseph because Joseph totally depended on God. But Joseph began connecting to God where? At the bottom of the pit, where Joseph learned to look up, to look up. So, what did we learn as our insight? The tested connection is marked by total dependence on God. What's our lesson? Here are some questions for you, okay? Are you at the bottom of the pit right now? You feel like you've been robbed of what you think belongs to you? Hmm. You feel betrayed, forgotten. You feel like you've been removed from existence or trapped in a setback that you cannot unstuck yourself from. Hmm. Beloved, perhaps you need to see that your setback is actually God's set up. So in order for you to see that, you need to learn to look up. To depend on Him alone. Not only when you need Him, but to depend on Him for life. To totally depend on God. Beloved, right now He's waiting. He needs to hear from your heart cry. I'm choosing no longer to depend on myself, on man, on things or anything you consider as self-dependence. I'm choosing to totally depend on you, Lord. Wow. Is that what your heart is saying? Well, imagine everything and everyone you depended on in life and depend on today, right now. Okay? All right. Place them in your hands like this. Lord, here they are. Then give this all to the Lord. Beloved, look up. He is looking down on you. Story number two. Story number two, the Potiphar episode, the acid test of devotion and loyalty. Okay, after... God tests Joseph's total dependence, a shift of self -depend from self-dependence to God-dependence. Joseph's life now begins as a slave. Now, his master's name was Potiphar. That's why we titled this episode the Potiphar episode. Joseph being a slave caused me to think it must have been quite difficult, a major adjustment in the life of Joseph. You see, back home kasi, he was served everything he needed, di ba? Popular, I mean, favorite. Eh? And he's constantly now, as a slave, on his toes, you know, at every bidding of Potiphar's uh, commands and whims and desires. Lahat. You know, some of you watching know how that feels. However, we read, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. And Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. So from that time, he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned. The Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The Lord was with Joseph, that's one. And, and he prospered in everything he did, okay? And then next, and Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and he too was blessed. So, Potiphar promoted Joseph to top attendant. Now, I don't know. Jo Joseph may be unaware that he was 
already fulfilling the covenant blessing design. What do I mean? You know, to be blessed and then to be a blessing to others. Remember, we've been learning that since Abraham. Even as a slave, yes, imagine that. As a slave, he was already a covenant blessing to an Egyptian household. Potiphar, captain of the guards, parang PSG today, you know, or even higher. No? He was accorded with everything that came with the rank, right? And to be in that rank, he must probably be over oh, 45 and above, you know. And as such, marami siyang eligibilities, including having beautiful wives, young wives, uh, maybe as old as Joseph himself, no? So, on the other hand, we will read in in the text that Joseph, he must have been a handsome young man. Remember in Genesis 37, we were told that he was 17 when he was abducted to become a slave. So, though a slave, you know, th this was interesting. He knew how to brush his teeth, how to maintain good hygiene. He had a well-shaped body. But classing slave ito, no? So, now, this, this situation, I will tell us today, is another setup by God. Why? To test Joseph. Test him with what? To determine Joseph's loyalty and devotion. We read in Genesis 39, continuing, Now Joseph was well-built and handsome, and while as his master's wife, took notice of Joseph, he said, Come to bed with me. But Joseph refused. With me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even to be with her. Wow. So ito yung setup. Joseph was put in an awkward situation with the wife of his master. And what we read is that he was being seduced not only one, you know, one incident, one day, every day. Can you imagine that? No? Now, that situation where, you know, he did, he had to, kalaiwasan niya si Mrs. Potiphar. But every day, Mrs. Potiphar would sing him a song. Pag sila lang, no? Joseph, lumapit ka, da 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 di ba? Okay, pero ang sumasagot naman si Joseph, you know. Tukso, tan dun 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 Iwan, di ba? Wow, what a drama, no? But that situation showed that Joseph prevailed. Joseph prevailed. He would not budge in. Verse 11. One day, he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Joseph ran out. And, the, you know, the, 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 the way it's described in the original Hebrew is, you know, very quickly he prevailed. Even, what a story. Jo Joseph stood high on, on his moral grounds, you know, and most evidently, this is our point, Joseph chose devotion and loyalty to God. Why? Because this is what he said to Mrs. Potiphar at the beginning. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against Elohim? Yun po yung ginamit na word. That's the God of the Hebrews. How can, parang sinasabi niya, how can I sin against my God? And I believe that put a smile in God's. Joseph passed this test with flying colors. 
And so, let me put up our um, insight for this story. The tested connection is marked by unwavering devotion to God. The tested connection is marked by unwavering devotion to God. All right. Just like Abraham's loyalty was te tested in Genesis 22, do you remember? We will be tested whether our highest devotion belongs to God. Is, is anything replacing that fails the test? You know, let me just say this. This test is prevalent and common to all of God's Bible character and servants. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, Daniel, the Old Testament, the 12 of Jesus Christ, Paul, Barnabas, Timothy, name them all, okay? They all connected to God and God connected to them because what? God was utmost and supreme in their devotion to God. Remember, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all. And this points to the supreme place God wants in your life and mine. So when we love God this way, we get connected to God, you know, in, in a divine and real way. You know, in John 14, 21, this is what it says. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them. And here, show myself to them. Show myself to them. That means make myself real to them. That means connect to them in a very real way. What's our lesson on this uh, episode okay beloved god knows your heart he can see if he has a real rival in your heart capturing your devotions more than your love for god beloved if that is true he is testing you what are you going to do about it maybe you're asking me what what, what do i do well repent Humble yourself. Go back to God. Because whoever or whatever it is you value more than God, that person or thing, it's more important to you that puts God out of the equation of life. The Lord is testing you now. Let me ask you, as you look looking into your heart, who is your highest devotion? Would you pass this test of devotion right now? And if you're struggling, let me just shoot a quick prayer for you. Beloved, Lord, this brother and sister is struggling about making you the highest in his or her life. Help her come to you and draw near to this person in Jesus' name. Amen. Story number three. Story number three, the prison episode. When desperation fuels hope in God. Joseph passed the test, the moral test. But what happened because of that? Well, you know, Genesis tells us what happened. In, in Genesis 39, it continues. You know, uh, she kept his cloak beside her until his master came home, verse 16. Then she told him this story, that Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story, his wife told him, saying, this is how the, your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. Grabe. 
you know, you make the right choice and then you end up worse. You know, that's the human point of view speaking in us. Immediately, what we see is an unjust setback. But as what we've been learning from God's point of view, this human setback was another divine setup. Remember our story number one, right? For Joseph's final test, he was going to be tested with many things. Perseverance, yes. Patience, yes. Sa loob ng prison, tagal. Consistency, yes, yes. Ability to hang on in there, yes. All of this, Joseph will be tested in prison. But I see one more thing that I believe made the connection really firm and real. And so we read, continuing in the story, he was put in the king's prison, verse 20, but while Joseph was there in prison, here, the Lord was with him. There you go. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those he held in prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because, here we go, the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Wow! Can you imagine that? As a slave, he was a blessing to Potiphar. Now, as a prisoner, he continued to be a blessing to the entire prison, continuing the covenant design. Remember? Because God was blessing Joseph, God was with Joseph, all around him were being blessed through him. That is the covenant blessing. So, continuing in the story, you know, we're going to fast forward this. We learn in the following chapter of the familiar story of the baker and the cupbearer. This is now, you know, well into the imprisonment. And so Joseph's spiritual gift to interpret dreams came in handy, you know, in this chapter 40. Joseph offered to tell the meanings of the dreams of the baker and the cupbearer. And so, uh, you know, fast forwarding, as he heard the conversation, he tells them the baker will be executed, but the cupbearer will be spared. Now, it's important for us to eavesdrop in this conversation because after a prolonged and unjust imprisonment, okay, we will see Joseph's heart here. Let me read Genesis 40 verse 12 onwards, okay? This is what it means, he tells the two. Joseph said to him, the three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to position, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison, for I was for forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and he even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in the dungeon. So, yun yung kanyang prophecy of the uh, cup bearer. And, you know, both dreams were fulfilled. We are told that the cup bearer, however, in verse 41, the cup bearer forgot Joseph. Let me read that verse in Genesis 40, 23. The cup bearer, however, did not remember Joseph. This time, it was Pharaoh who had a dream. We see the story. You know, we won't dive into the details and how his magicians could not interpret uh, Pharaoh's dream. But the cupbearer remembered Joseph. So in front of Pharaoh, he said, You know, royal Pharaoh, yeah, naalala ko po, meron pala akong atraso si isang bilanggo. <laughs> As the cupbearer revealed Joseph's plight, and his special gift to interpret dreams. And 
we know the rest of the story. Joseph was released and came face to face with Pharaoh and Pharaoh asked him to interpret his dream and before he could interpret the dream, before he attempted to interpret the dream, Joseph made a powerful declaration. Now this is so important. Genesis chapter 41, 15, and 16. Let me read it. Okay? Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream and no one can interpret it. But I heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. There you are. What a story. This section will be followed by, you know, 10 chapters of God's blessing Joseph to the max. Okay, we won't go to that. But you know the story. We don't have time for all of that. But for now, let me put up our insight in this story right now. Okay? The tested connection is marked by intense desperation for God. The tested connection is marked by intense desperation for God. Beloved, for lack of a better word, a, you know, a desperation, you know, a desperate person will do anything for what he wants or what he craves for. And here, Joseph shows us that he was wanting to be released. Yes, of course, wanting freedom to go back to his father's household where he was a favorite. Maybe, yes. But I propose Joseph was desperate for God. Think about that. Desperate for God to do something to level himself to a higher plane of existence than being simply a, a mighty blessing to the Muntin Lupa of Egypt. The picture of a man connected to God is right here. Okay? Joseph's answer to Pharaoh. Look at his heart. God will do it. Not I, but God through me will. Wow, what an answer. Beloved, until and unless we desperate, we're desperate enough for God, He will not connect with you and through you in a real significant way. A compelling connection with God cannot come from a flimsy desire to engage with God every now and then. An example in the New Testament, Jesus asked Peter to test his desperation. You know? Peter, do you love me? And how many times did Jesus ask Peter? Three times. You know, Jesus, do you really, I mean, Peter, do you really, really, really love me? Jesus wanted to see Peter's desperation. So here we find that Joseph passed the final test. And he was richly rewarded. You know, these next 10 chapters, you know, from the pit to the palace, from, you know, slavery, you know, to royalty, from the dark horrors of life to the highest honors one can be blessed with. And you know, God did this all. And God does still today to all who pass this test and all the three that we have learned today actually so what's our lesson as we close consistently we are learning it's it's all about the heart right? not the works not the outputs they're all important not the externals but the internal state of the heart beloved how is your heart today Will God find in you a deep, deep hunger, yearning for God? Are you desperate enough for God to be real to you? How desperate are you? Remember, those who told Jesus, I'll follow you, but let me first do this and do that. Jesus said, no. Not enough. Do you, beloved, so desire God desperately in your life? If yes, beloved, allow God to show you how your setback may be right now is actually is set up and step you up to what He wants you to do. If 
you feel like in your heart you're not, not really desperate enough, then, beloved, you need to look into your heart, okay? And allow God's Word to search within and show you the way to God's intimacies. Beloved, this story is beautiful because as we see Joseph, I would like to jump right at the very end of his life. Verse 19, Genesis 50. Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Wow! Joseph, the man who passed the three tests, concluded by saying, all things work together for good. Joseph tested connection marked by total dependence on God. The tested connection that is marked by unwavering devotion to God. The tested connection that is marked by intense desperation for God. Beloved, will you pass the test? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for teaching us through Joseph. Some of us are somewhere in these three tests. And I pray, O oh God, that you will just be there with them because that's the key. That you will show yourself your presence and make that presence real to them. And so as we do sense your presence, may it be our affirmation that we are where you want us to be. And that, Lord, we will continue we will continue to show that we are totally dependent on you. That our highest devotion is unto you. And that you will find in my heart, in our hearts, a desperation enough to want you and you alone. Find us faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well.
Amen. It is well with my soul. Thank you, Gemini and your family for leading us in our praise and worship. Beloved, it's time to look up. Father, bless us now as we depart from meeting together this way and now taking our steps towards the, our lives. Each, I pray, will be marked by the heart that you seek from every one of us, depending on you completely, devoted to you totally, and so desperately wanting you in our lives. May the Father, His love, envelope you with His presence. May the empowerment, the joy, the comfort of the Holy Spirit lift you up to His presence. And may the blessing of the salvation of Jesus Christ remind us again that through Him, the people of God is to bless this world. To Him be the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend.